www.radioemisión.net Hello again and welcome to Letter from England, broadcasting for AC Press and the Spanish Evangelical Alliance. The Catholic Bishop of Almería, González Montes, who is also chairman of the Episcopal Commission for Interconfessional Relations, has responded to criticism by the Anglican Bishop of Madrid, Carlos López, over the Vatican's invitation to disaffected Anglicans to join them. Bishop Montes says it's not part of a proselytizing Catholic strategy which is trying to split the Anglican Communion and weaken even more its critical internal situation. Lopez had attacked the move as seeking to benefit from the current internal debate within Anglicanism. Well, I'm onto this statement there uh, that it's not uh, proselytizing, not part of a strategy, uh, rather begs the question as to what proselytism is, uh, an invitation uh, from one church to the members of another to come and join it because of the crisis that the first church thinks the second is in looks rather like proselytism and his statement that um, they're not trying to weaken Anglicanism even more or weaken its critical internal situation even more uh, does rather more uh, than suggest uh, that the Catholic Church is trying to uh, or is aware uh, of uh, potential benefit that there could be in, to them in trying to offer uh, that invitation to disaffected Anglicans. Uh, it very clearly says that they see that the Church of England is in crisis and uh, they may not be trying to uh, make that crisis worse uh, but they're certainly trying to uh, take people out of that crisis. Well, Montes uh, replied that even Rowan Williams, Archbishop of Canterbury, has said he is willing to continue having dialogue with Rome but that doesn't take anything away from Lopez's comments. Uh, indeed, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, rather like his predecessors, um, has seemed extraordinarily unwilling to do anything to rock the boat with Rome, something that's always been a great mystery to me, um, and uh, almost uh, seems prepared to, to do or say anything, uh, not just to keep open so-called dialogue with Rome, uh, but also to sort of keep one foot in the door, as it were, uh, towards a, a full reconciliation uh, which of course from a Protestant perspective is a denial of Reformation theology uh, and uh, the whole basis upon which the Church of England was established however uh, Montes uh, also claims that uh, such an invitation would not have been possible without the doctrinal convergence achieved through ecumenical dialogue between Anglicans and Catholics over the last 40 years well, the uh, archic uh, conversations, the Anglican uh, Roman Catholic International Commission uh, conversations, which uh, date back to uh, 1970, and there were preparatory uh, talks even before that, um, have certainly been lengthy, but what have they achieved? Well, uh, it seems to this observer that Rome has not shifted one iota on its doctrinal positions, uh, whereas the Anglican Church, uh, in classic sort of Anglican fudging, uh, has managed to um, establish a, a ways uh, of uh, or formula formulae of words or ways of speaking uh, which allow it to suggest that its own positions are actually rather closer to Rome's either than they actually are or certainly uh, than that which uh, more conservative uh, interpreters of those doctrinal positions uh, would think. Uh, they've had talks on various uh, doctrinal points um, and. Uh, their, their statements or co-statements um, perhaps have suggested that they uh, can live together more happily than would be uh, felt by many members within either of those churches. However, more recently, of course, Archic has completely stalled over the uh, rather more um, public and controversial issues of the ordination of women and the ordination of homosexual clergy. Um, and that's been more than enough uh, for the Catholic Church to step back uh, from any real engagement uh, with those conversations, uh, although it has to be said that uh, many observers would question whether the Catholic Church's heart was really in such ecumenical endeavours, at least uh, on a level playing field, and that they were only involved in them um, really with the intention of seeking reconciliation with the Church of England on their own terms, i.e. Uh, that Anglicanism should return to the pre-Reformation fold of Roman Catholicism, which of course would be a complete denial of the Protestant uh, historical position. 
Montes goes on, proselytism has been rejected, though, he says, as a method for the reconstruction of the visible unity of the Church and is contrary to genuine ecumenism. Ecumenical dialogue moves towards visible unity only by respecting the faith of each Church in a search for the full truth of faith. Well, grand words, but not really what they mean, because if ecumenical dialogue means respecting the faith of each Church, what has Rome been up to? It continues to teach that it's the one true Church, and that churches such as the Church of England are at best separated brethren, but certainly not true churches. Therefore, how that's respecting the faith of that church is rather hard to understand. Um, as for the visible unity of the church, the only visible unity, if that phrase means anything, uh, that Rome understands, of course, would be every church being part of Roman Catholicism. And Montes finishes up by saying these Anglicans have experienced the risk of ecclesiastical change driven by progressive ideology, well we all know what he means there, which endangers the sacramental structure of the faith as much as the moral aspect and that of church discipline. Well of course we're back to a completely different view of church, um, a hierarchical um, papal uh, view of church and of course uh, with a sacramental theology behind it, all of which Protestants would or at least should uh, completely reject. But the bishop concludes that the substantial agreement, they're his words, which exists between Rome and Canterbury, leads him to hope that both churches can move towards visible church unity. Well, if they do, there may be institutional unity between Rome and Canterbury uh, at one level, um, but there surely won't be a unity uh, in the gospel. Or at least if there is, it won't be in that organisation. Thank you for listening to Letter from England, broadcasting each week at acpress.net and emission.net.